day everyone this is damrest photography today we'll be doing full editing full editing again yeah full editing so today this is the image we're going to be editing uh okay so first of all we're going to be cropping this image as you can see this is a smart object here yeah? so this is a smart object so i'm just going to be, i like cropping my images while they are smart objects so right now this is a smart object if your image is not a smart object you just have to right click and click on uh, uh what they call it convert to smart object let's see oh uh, yeah convert to smart objects around here but well, mine is already a smart object so i'm not converting to smart object so i just go to uh crop I'm cropping by four ratio six around uh let's go here change it to four ratio six and then let me position the image the way I want the middle to be, which is this. Now let me see how I want the image to be. Ctrl Z. Okay, I think I want it around here. Yeah, I think around here will do not today around here like this would do. So let's see. Okay. Then let me increase the image size, taking the height to six thousand. The width will automatically the width will automatically be set because they are linked. So I'll click on OK. The reason why I do my cropping as well it's on smart object is because after you crop a lot of details will be lost but if it's a smart object most details will not be lost you can see the details on the image are not lost so that's why i like cropping my image as a smart object and then after cropping it i make sure i i change the image size so that it will be the same image size before you edited the image and then and then i flatten yeah so this is my image this is what i'm going to be doing this is what i'm going to be editing so next i'm going to ctrl j and make another copy so first of all i want to clean up this part of the background so i can just uh I can just do another ctrl j and then i can just use this to click out this part i want to clean up yeah so this is what i want to clean up Mm, I want to remove some other parts that are not necessary to be cleaned. Yeah, that is good. I remove there. I remove here too. Yeah, this is good. So this is what I want to clean up. This is what I want to clean up. So I just right click and click on Content Aware. Content Aware field. So now I'm going to be using Content Aware to clean up. As you can see, it's going to use this part of the image to clean up. But like I said, I don't want this part of the hair, so I'm just going to go to this place, make sure I'm on minus, and then I'm just going to clean up those parts, those parts, those parts, those parts, because I don't want them to be used to clean up my image. All those parts are selected green. Those are the parts that will be used by Photoshop to correct your image. So if a part is selected and then you don't want it to be part of what is going to be used to correct your image, you just have to clean it up. You get you just clean up and add the part you want. You get. So let's see. Let's watch and see. We we'll just allow the image to load. Yeah. So I like to load and then see. Once it's finished loading, then we now click on OK. Or right now I'm just waiting a bit. Okay, as you can see, it has finished loading. As you can see there are some imperfections here but that can be cleaned with clone stamp so i just click on ok and then i uh i deselect this i what they call it i off this two layers here i merge this one and i'm going to just uh i'm just going to use clone stamp as you can see my past that 100 my flu is at 15 
so i'm just going to use the clone stamp to like just touch up those little imperfections that you see around there yeah around there yeah i think that's that's good that's good that's good yeah so that's good already that's good next thing i'm going to just on this one i'm going to clip this one to the pin it to one pin it then i'm going to just match that clipping marks like i said i like to work non-destructively so everything i do in the end i'll still clip it to the one that i didn't work on and then i'll match it so now i want to divide i want to i want to separate the image from the background and the background from the image because i still want to put an overlay on the background that is a color overlay on the background to just make it more perfect you get so uh next i'm going to do is i'm just going to go to quick selection tool and then click on select subject yeah so just wait a bit for fit shots with this selection okay so let's see okay photoshop has done a good job i don't need to do anything anymore okay i need to select this i need to select this yeah i need to select this yeah i also need to select this select this let's make sure yeah i need to select this yeah that is good that's okay here yeah, too what else what else let's go down and see okay that's good so next thing i'm going to feather this image i'll feather the image okay i'll feather that and then i'll invert it select invert no not invert first i'm just going to click on ctrl j yeah and then i'll call, click on ctrl and click on this layer again and i'll go back to the, the next layer i invert the selection and then i click on ctrl j like i said i want to work on just the background right now so i just have to off all these layers as you can see now i'm going to be working on just the background first of all i want to blow it a bit no i'm not going to blow it a bit first of all i want to add a color overlay so i'm just going to go to solid colors and click on ok first and then i'm going to off it I'm going to off that first of all i want to click on ctrl j on this one like i said i'm not working on i don't want to, i want to work non-destructively you get so this one now i'm going to clip it i'm going to clip it to the one i'm working on destructively on and then i'm going to double click on this first and i'm just going to pick on that color the brightest part of the colors that's why i like picking so as you can see this is the brightest part of colors i click on okay mm, okay so click on okay I can use just colors i think i can use colors let me click on normal okay i like normal i like normal let's use normal and then i can just reduce the feel of this yeah like i said so i think 40 is enough I think 40 is enough here yeah, 40 is enough before after before after okay let me reduce this take it down a bit too let's just leave it at 30 before after that's good okay now so i can just match this too i think that's okay for me so i'm just going to create another clipping marks on this beneath one and then i'm just going to match it too yeah so okay that's good that's good okay let's off it we see before after before after now we have a cleaner texture so we have cleaner stuff on those things before after last but not the least if we can go into the image you see you see that we have a normal vigent we have a, a what they call it if i open this image you see that uh we have a, a light facing the background to give it a sort of natural vision then we're having another light coming from the back hitting the subject around here then we're having another light around here around here too again at the side here hitting the image straight like this so what i'm going to do is now i'm going to bring back that vision because it's still there but it's not that 
it's not showing that much so let me off all this again we're going to click on make another control j i'm going to do a clipping mark create a clipping marks so that it will be clipped to this and then i'm just going to go to filter go to camera roll go to camera roll then i'm going to go to effects go to effects and then i'll just give it a bit of widget see i'm just trying to bring back that widget you get on just that background you get so okay for that i think okay for that then i just have to merge the clipping marks again and then i'm just going to do that okay as you can see before after before after so we're moving we're moving yeah so color grading and all will come later after all the scary touching and all so next thing we're going to be doing is uh clean up of the image i'm going to clean up the image which i'm going to be using selective and um, spot alien brush to do first so now i'm just going to go from the top down just easy like that so so let's go like that i'm going to clean that clean that yeah as you can see we're having a lot of imperfections here that i want to clean up oh this we have to just do it easy easy mm easy so things on the page too that you think you need to clean you have to decide depending on your own um, thinking things you want to clean like, like like i said for this image there are some things i'm just going to clean because i think the made the image look imperfect you get so i'm just going to clean them up Okay, so let's move. Let's see, let's move downwards. Let's move downwards and see. Okay, so okay, so let's see. Hope we've done. Hope we've done. Okay, other cleanups can be done during frequent separation. I think. Yeah, other frequency can be done during frequent separation. I think. So, I think that's all for now. That's all for now. That's all for now. that's all for now so let's go okay let's clean that one up okay 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 i think that's all for now okay okay
Okay, so let's put all that into one folder and see we have before, after, before, after. So I'm just going to name that background. Background, yeah. I'm just name that BG. Lock, BG. I like short words. Too lazy, yeah. Okay, so now I'm just going to make a stamp layer because next thing we're going to frequency separation. So now I want to make a stamp layer, you get. So I'm just going to right click on this. So I'm going to right click on this and then uh, hold my halt and click on mad visible. You see, I make a stamp layer like that. So if I continue FX, I want to make uh, a group which in each will hold my L player. The L player is meant to be able to help me know where the lights and shadows are coming from. This will help me out when I'm doing dodge and burn. Also help out in frequency separation once in a while like that. So first of all, let me just make a group. Then let me click on black and white. Click on black and white adjustment. And also click on the clock curves adjustment. So for the curves adjustment, I'm going to click make two points here. One point here, one point here. Now bring one down and then uh, bring one up. We're trying to make an S. As you can see, we're having lots of light. The shadows are not much enough, so we can just adjust it. As you can see now, the shadows are showing more. You can also go to this place and then, if you like. Um, okay. Okay, see now, brighten up this. I'm darkening the dark brighten the yellows which represents the lights as you can see now we know that it's a one side light as you can see now it's a one it's a one side light light is like this and then this whole part is a split lightning i did this is split lightning so we have light here we don't have lights here you get no light at all at this place except for some some stuff that are hitting it light from this this place just hitting it here okay so off that then I'm just going to go to okay, go back to my FX, make another country J, name the top one high, name the beneath one low. Okay, so I'm going to off that and put them first into one group. I'll name this FX, FS, name this help. Now I go back to FX. And then I go to the low layer. Like I said, I've off this high layer. First of all, I'm going to make find the place where that has more uh, what they call more textures on this image. Mm, okay. Okay. Let's work with. Uh, let's work with. Let's work with the nose. Let's work with the nose. Nose forehead around. So let's see, we we'll go to filter, go to noise, we'll go to median. Then now, I, I, like I said, we're looking for where it has, so I said, that has the most, uh, what they call most um, textures. And then I'm using the nose to work. And like I said, when we locate where it has more textures, we want to blow the textures there, but also not blow the lines of the image. The lines I'm talking of are all those lines around the nose, all these lines of the eyes, all those lines, we don't want to blow them out. We want to blow out the textures of the image you get. So, um, so I think. Six ain't too much for this image right now. What I'm seeing, six is not too much. Let me increase it to seven. Let's see. Okay, I think seven is enough for this image here. Yeah? Seven is enough. 7 is enough, so I'm going to be using 7, and I just click on OK. Uh, click on OK, let that load. Okay, that's good. I go to the high, go to the on it again, and then go to image, go to apply image. On this layer part, I'm going to click on low. I'll invert it here on this blend mode. I'll click on add, then I'll make sure preserve is not marked, max is not marked, opacity is at 100, scale is at 2, offset is at 0. And then I click on OK. Also, I change the blend mode to linear light. Yeah, 
So that's the step for frequent separation before after it seems like we've not done anything that's how it's meant to be so now we're going to start the frequent separation my first step of frequent separation is using the low layer using the mixer brush tool on the low layer so my setup for mixer brush tool is around for wetness i make sure it's about 10 percent to 20 percent depending on the image if i put it on 20 and i see it's too much no from 10 percent to 25 if I put it on 20 and I see it's too much, I can reduce it to 15. Yeah, so my load is 30, my mix is 30, my flow is 30. Okay, so now we can start. So for this image, I can either off the I can either off the on the help layer and then use it to do my brush, or I can just off it and then off off the or what they call high layer. As you can see, when I off the high layer, the image is all blurry. I can just use it to get what I want to do here. So now I'm going to start up with frequency separation. Let me on this. Let me open this and then let's just go like that. As you can see, I'm usually fearful of doing uh, what they call frequent separation on paint. I'm usually fearful of doing frequent separation on paint. So look at, I just want to try and see. Sometimes it just affects the way the paint are. So most times I don't like doing frequent separation on paint, face paints. But for this, I think I'll just do it. It's not affecting that much. Okay, so I think that's good. So while I do frequency separation, I try not to spoil the contours of the face. You get, I try not to try not to spoil the contours of the face. Oh. Applying frequent separation on this kind of faces are usually hard. Until there are a lot of paints. Normally, I can just do something like this, but now I'm afraid that, as you can see, you're bringing in a lot of colors into where they should not be, and bringing blacks into where they should not be. You get so that's why I don't do something like that. You get. That's why I don't do something like that. So I have to be careful while I do frequent separation on this type of images. Try to make sure I don't pick up colors because for frequent separation, you are, you are blending colors. You get you can just pick colors and then move them. If you're not careful, you can move colors into where they should not be. You get so while I do frequent separation, I try to just be careful, especially with this type of images. Okay, so like I said, I try to be careful with this type of images. Mm, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Okay, so let's do that again. And let's go into that part. Oh, 
ओके ओके जैसे सो डू डू दिस फॉर यू बस कैन सी यू आई ट्राई नॉट टू ब्रिंग आउट द व्हाइट आउट ऑफ दिस प्लेस हम्म इट टेक्स अ बिट ऑफ टाइम इट टेक्स योर टाइम इन बिट बॉल इज गुड इन द लॉन्ग रन get a better image you get better images in the long run you get you decide that you want to shoot this type of image and it's better for you to do it <laughs> as best as possible you get okay so just trying to see if i can go as fast as possible for this uh try to do this according to the contour so i don't spoil the contours of the image you get Okay. I think uh, okay, I think we only have the nose to work on for here. Yeah, we have to work on the nose. I don't think we've done that. Yeah, we've not done that. So let's do this. Let's see. So we have in We have in this. Okay. Hmm. So we have in before, after. I see. Let's go back and see. Let's go back and see before, after. So I'm also having a problem with around here, so that can be resolved later, sure. So, last but not the least, with using this, I uh, want the gold mixer brush. I want to work on the clothes a bit. So, just going to try to apply to the clothes a bit because I just want it to I want to smooth it a bit to get. Let's see before, after. That's good. Okay. So now I'm just going to use the. We're going to be using the. Go to the high layer and then using the clone stamp to clean up things that we've missed. You get things we missed. Things we want to clean up. Just go through the image and then see and then see. Let's go through the image and see. Brush tool to to blend them. 
Yeah, something like that. So let's go back to clone stamp, highly uh yeah, then we'll clean up. Okay. Okay, I think that's all. Next, last but not least, for <coughs> frequency separation is using the lasso tool. As you can see, we've lost a lot of uh, we've lost a lot of uh, what they call textures on this image. We've lost a lot of textures. So using the lasso tool is to be, to bring back textures that we've lost. So I'll go back to the low layer. I'll go to lasso tool, and then I'm going to pick. Like I said, if I apply this on uh, what they call on colors, it's going to blow out those colors, which is not good. So normally you can just pick a large area or area of the image to do this lasso tool part. But right now we can't do that because of a lot of. Uh, colors we're seeing on the image because of the face paint so right now we just have to pick just some parts you get just some parts make sure we are not picking colors so we'll go to filter we'll go to noise we'll go to median then we are going to multiply the value we used for our previous lasso to, um, for our previous media we'll multiply by three which will give us what we're going to be using for our lasso tool right now so we use seven so seven times sometimes 21 that will give us uh sometimes 21 i'm sometimes three that will give us 21 which is okay so that's what we apply here then we just go like that all the way around So as you can see, that's how we just go around, just go around the image, try to, try to miss uh, what they call, try not to touch the areas, not try not to touch the colored areas you get. Mm, I think I'm going to just leave this. But okay, that's good. I think yeah, that's good. So the last part is let's uh, see before after. That's good. Last part is going to be this middle part of the nose. So we're just going to do this middle part of the nose. Go to filter for the middle part of the nose so that it will not be flat. I like to divide our value by two. Twenty one divided by two. 10 and a half so let me just give it 11 okay so that's what i use for the middle part of those if we had a full image the value i use for the mid part of those is what i'll use for the remaining part of the image so since we don't have i think that's last part of frequency separation for us on this image so that's all for frequency separation just select go back 
let's go and see as you can see we brought bad textures to the uh it to the image you get to brought bad textures to the skin so now if you go back and then you see let's go before after before after okay i'm seeing something i don't like there uh, let's go to clone stamp let's open that let's see if i can do something about that but i don't like i'm seeing something white here which i don't like at all so let me see if i can do something about that let me bring in that part let me see seems i can't do much about that okay before after let me try something else let me use this let me see if i can oh i can do something a bit about it let's go back and see okay i don't like what i did let's try another thing let's see see i'm just trying to do something something good you get let's see let's go back and see okay before after that's better that's way better okay that's what i did so i think that's all for frequent separation next we're going to be doing dodge and bone look at dodge and bone first yeah look at dodge and bone so let me off my let me off i'm going to be offing my stuff first i'm going to offer the frequent separation first I just go to image no i go to layer I go to new go to layer and then i change the mode to soft light make sure i click on fill with soft light neutral color 50 percent gray and i click on ok this is going to be called local db which is local dodge and burn i like to make sure my frequency separation is off in time i'm applying all my dodge and burn because i want to apply them on the real skin i want to apply them on the rich textures so so that i don't go and uh because frequency and um, look at dodge and burn you can use it to you can look at look at dodge and burn to shape an image so right now i don't want to i don't want to go shaping the image the way it's not shaped you get if that's what i'm going for then no problem sometimes i do that or oh, for this image i don't really want to i just want to bring out the shapes all the shapes so i like to work on the main stuff so that frequency separation will not blind my eyes you get so now i'm going to go to brush for this one look at dodge and bone we're going to be doing opacity at 100 flow at one flow at one so opacity at 100 flow at one percent so um first of all i want to brighten up if you want for you to apply dodge and burn using this layer you have to make sure anytime it's on white it's dodge every time it's on black you're burning so now we're dodging i want to dodge this part of the eyes yeah i just want to make it brighter Mm, for this one I, let me go back for this one i'm going to increase it a bit yeah i know what i'm doing i'm trying to test out something for this let's see if it will work i hope it does before after yeah that's good i like that i like that as you can see this is just me trying to uh, give it a sort of effect on the eyes since it's that's what i'm going for for this image that's not normally i use the same one percent if it's a normal eye grading but since this one i'm trying to give it that sort of effect that's why i am doing this yeah that's the effect i'm trying to go for the eyes as you can see before after before after that's what i'm trying to go for the eyes so back to normal stuff i go back to one percent so now first of all let me just work on this so i want to dodge i want to dodge i just want to dodge around here i want to dodge here i want to dodge here i'm also going to dodge no i'm not dodging it's calm down i'm burning i'm burning here i'm burning here normally for local dodger bone i just use it for the clothes and the hair but i also use it to bunch of parts of the eyes to bring out more details that is some part of the face to bring out details in them 
so for this i'm just doing it around both i'm burning this part of the eyes that is the eyebrow and this part yeah i also want to dodge the paints i think i should dodge the paints let me just do that let me dodge the paints too mainly the black paints and then i can burn i can dodge the whites So since this is a tutorial this might take time so let's just leave it like that um let's leave it like that since this is a tutorial but you get the scope of what i'm just trying to say so let me just dodge here let me burn here let me dodge this main part or let's just leave it like that like i said since this is a tutorial so I'm just going to do burn this part. I'm going to burn this part. I think that's okay. So now let's go back to the main thing we're meant to do: the clothes and the hairs. So let me first do the hair. I'm going to dodge this part of the hair. I'm going to dodge this part of the hair. And I'm going to burn. I'm going to burn this part. This part. I'm going to burn some part of the hair too. Like I said, I'm giving, trying to give the hair dimension, I'm trying to give the image dimension. As you can see, I'm just trying to give the image dimension. I'm also going to give this part, burn this part. As you can see, I'm having shadows here. So I'm just trying to accentuate those. As you can see too, I'm also going to burn, dodge this part of the clothes. And I'm going to burn this part. So as you can see before, after, before, after. Yeah. You can see we're just trying to give the image more, more detail before after before after now global dungeon bone which will just be done on the skin so we'll just go to course adjustment layer bring it down and invert it go to another course adjustment layer take it up invert it so this will be named bone this will be named dodge Now I'm going to make sure put them into one layer and then into one group and call that global db. And I'm going to go to my brush to make sure my opacity is at 100. Flow is at 5%. And I'm going to own this. This will help me out now. As you can see, we are having split, split. We are having blacks here. We are having white here. I mean um, highlights here, shadows here. That is how the image is. That is how the stuff is. As I edited the image, so I said as I as I shot the image. So now let me dodge around this part. Just going to dodge around this part. Also going to like we having a little bit of reflection around here. I think that's all for that. Also having it around here. Also having it around here like that. Let's hold that and see before. After that's good. Mm, let's on it again. So, 
same thing for around here now I'm going to accentuate his eyes again around here too I'm also going to do it on here too on here too and dodge I'm going to dodge the main eyes I'm going to dodge the main eyes and I'm just going to dodge around here dodge here too Last but not the least, we're going to apply a bit of shine to the image. So that is, we'll go to another to curves layer two again. We'll just take it up just a bit. We can adjust that later and double click on it. Then bring the image around here. Move it to this place just a bit. And then we'll move it back depending on you. Mm, that's okay. For me and now I can either take it up like I said I'm giving a bit of shine so now I just can just work on that depending on how I want it before after oh okay I made a mistake there I made a mistake there so I meant to do this for just the image so let's go back just go back and then select the image again just the image and then i do the curves see now anything i apply is just on the image it's not going to be applied on the background so i just take it up a bit double click on it take it here a bit and then hold alt hold alt and then divide it and take it back here that's okay for me before after take it down a bit for after that's good for me okay so i'm just going to put that into one folder and then db name that db and before after before after that's good for this image i don't need to whiten any eyes whiten any teeth so i'm not doing that so we'll just put that straight into one folder and i name that skin next i'm going to do color grading color grading color grading first of all for my color grading i like to give it a bit of magenta feel you get so around here pick a magenta feel i've not used something as dark as this before so let me try it mm, i go to color and i go to feel and make it five percent before after what is it what do i like Okay. this is okay before after normal not color normal not color yeah this is good mm, give you okay. this is okay 
before after so next we're going to be working on the background so again i'm going to go and select that background again mm, so let's invert that let's invert that so now i want to work on just the background so i'm just going to selective colors selective colors then i'll go to the background and see blues no or cyan let's see okay it works but i want to give you blacks i want to give you blacks you go so let's go let me see this i want to try blacks for this background i want to try blacks i want to try give it a bit of blackish feel let's see what happens go let's go blacks still not working let me go to blues and see i want to make you blackish i'm trying to i'm trying to make this image black you get so that is the background black let's go black and mm, not 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 there go back let's see hue saturation let's see colorize no let's take you black let's see how you look okay it's not working the way i want so let's just close that and then let's just work on what we have hmm? <laughs> so let's work on what we have so let's work on blues on cyan first and see where it takes us I'm going to work according to my feel of colors you get what i feel like okay this is what i feel like let me go to the blues let's see okay so we have before after before after before after So this is my feel for the color. This is my feel for the color. So this is what I want. So let me just save that. Go save, save. Mm, res. Go to clean tin model. Color. BG. Okay. So next I'm going to be doing the skin. So same thing. I'm going to invert that too and then i'm going to go to selective colors this one is just going to be affecting the uh this part the cloth here so i'm going to clean up the skin that is i'm going to remove the skin by holding by using blacks mm, i'm going to oh okay flow at 100 so i'm hiding the skin part you get i'm hiding the skin part okay this is slow a bit okay it's a bit slow so i'm trying to hide the skin because i just want to apply this on on the image okay that's good okay that's good so now i'm just going to be applying blacks on the image itself blacks yeah just a bit can see before after before after for the clothes next i'm going to be doing for just the face and then i'm going to invert it too so selective colors and i can clean up the back the the clothes if i want to but 
doesn't really matter because for the face we are just going to be applying reds and yellows which usually don't affect which usually don't affect uh, which usually don't affect the face but i'm just going to clean it anyway okay so now i'm going to i didn't save okay i saved this i didn't save this so let me save this let me save this and name that uh let me name that uh clothes clinton the reason why i save my color grading why i save the selective colors is so that when i have other images on that same uh on that same um, shoot that i want to edit i can just apply it instead of needing to color grade again you get so right now i'm just going to save this as a cloth so when they are saved in that same folder i can just go back there and then just apply it you get what i'm saying so now red for the skin red um, Okay. Also going to go to the yellows and see. Let's put those two into one folder and see what I've done with the face. For me, I didn't really do much. Because if I apply much, I'm feeling that it's not working the way I want. So that's why I didn't really apply much for this skin. So let me just save those two too. Name that skin red. name this skin yellow save that skin yellow okay so i think that's all for this and next i'm going to go to camera roll, which i'm going to just make a stamp first make a stamp first And I move that to the top and I'm just going to make put these two ones into one folder and name them selective if I put it down what will it give me mm, not too bad but not too much difference wow not too bad though. let's see Not too bad, but no, that's the one I'm going for. So now I'm just going to go to filter camera roll. So do it on this camera roll, what I want to do is just to make the colors pop. Just make all the colors pop. So now I'll just go to calibration. And as you can see, I'm trying to make the colors pop here. Yeah? Yeah, so like I said, it depends on the feel, on the feel you want to get for your image. This is good. Before, after, before, after, good. Now you can see we're having probably having lots of red, but for this image, I think it's okay. Normally, if you're having lots of red after you've applied the calibration, you can just go to 
you can just go to color mixer and then you can just apply a bit of uh um, hue and then a bit of luminance but for this one we're not going to be doing that take it back to zero plus i feel you get i feel the reds are a bit okay for this image so it's okay so i just give it a bit of luminance and then we have before after before after as you can see we've made the colors pop again i'm just going to save this just going to save this again name this color just okay so next i'm going to give the image a bit of detail so let me put this two into one folder and then name that uh I'm going to name that uh color as you can see we started from here and this is what we have for color we have this from this from this to this from this to this that's good so we have this for skin so next we're going to give it a bit of detail so i'm just going to coughs i'll change the blend mode to multiply i'll bring it down a bit i'll bring it down a bit and then i'm going to invert that uh, so go to my brush tool we'll pass that 100 flow at two percent so now, like I said, I'm going to on the help layer. I'm just going to give it a bit of detail. You see all this dark side? I just want to accentuate them. I want to accentuate the shadowy parts. At the end of doing all those things, just find out your image starts looking a bit more 3D. Just trying to bring out some more details to the image. So I'm just trying to bring out more details you get. I'm just trying to bring out more details. You can see before, after, before, after. So, like, next thing, I'm going to do sharpening of the image. So, let me just delete this help layer since we don't need it again. So, I'm going to make another stamp. So I make a lot of stamp and then I go to filter, I go to camera roll. Camera roll and then I go to basic and then I give it a bit of texture. I'm going to give it a bit of texture, let's say 11. That's okay. And I go to filter, I go to order, I go to high pass. Then for the radius, I use around radius of 1 to 2. I'm using 
and I change the blend mode to opacity to soft light. You can either use linear light, vivid light, or soft light. I prefer soft light. Use at your discretion. Just try any one, one of the three. The one that you like best to use, like soft light, because it doesn't leave traces. So next, I'm going to give. I'm going to try to apply vigent and see how it looks. If it doesn't work well, then I just go straight to contrast. Or make another. I'm going to make another uh, stamp again. I go to filter, I go to camera raw. I go to effect and then I apply Vigence and see how it looks. Okay, I think I like that. Okay. Mode for this vigent I'm going to try to before after. I'm just going to try to apply it on just I don't want it to affect the image itself. So I'm just going to do this. Select the image, invert it. And then I'm going to do this and see how it goes before after. Before after that's good. Well that's that's really good. This is just my eyes. Yeah, that's good. So next thing I'm going to give it more contrast. So I'm just going to make another stamp again. So make another stamp again. Yeah, let's close that. Then I'll go to filter. Go to camera roll. Then I'm going to go to curves. Like I said, I want to give it contrast now depending on your feel you get see i'm liking giving it shadows for me i think this is okay for me this is okay and let me see darks no yeah a bit okay that's good light no yeah i want to give it just No, I don't give it light. Okay, that's good. Highlights, no? That's highlighting just a bit. So we have before, after, before, after. Let me give it light, let's see. Before, after, after, before, after, that's good. Okay, okay. before after before after okay so i can put that into one folder and then i can just go to brightness and contrast and click on auto let's see what it gives so right now i'm still i want to see what brightness and contrast we give then I can work from there. If I don't like what brightness and contrast gives, if I feel it's too much, I can reduce it. If it's too small, I can increase it. I just allow brightness and contrast to give me a sort of direction where it should go. Yeah? So let's see what it gives. Before, after, before, after. Okay, this is not bad. I don't think I need, really need to do anything on this. So that's okay. So last but not the least after you've done all the work as you can see before after before after we've really gone a long way we've really gone a long way so last but not the least you want to always you want to always uh export your images looking sharper you always want to export your images you want to import a uh, word you want to uh, upload your images on platforms and you don't want the colors to change so this is how you do that you go to field file and go to export export as then on this resample you make sure you're clicking on by cubic sharper 
and then on the color space you make sure convert to sRGB is clicked embedded a color profile is also clicked then go back up then on quality you can pick any quality depending on the size you're comfortable with as you can see as is on good quality right now and then I'm just saying 900 and something KB I can decide to change to great which I usually use great and it will give me the biggest quality possible for that image and then uh, let's see what great gives us here so once it comes out I can just click on export hmm? once it comes out I can just click on export and that's all as you can see 8.1 MB and I just click on export that's all so if you enjoyed this tutorial if you like this tutorial please subscribe please like please share uh, and see you in the next class have a wonderful